Okay. Well, thank you, Scott. Uh, well, uh, on behalf of the uh, NACA Natural Resource Aquaculture and Sea Grant Committee, we'd like to welcome uh, all of you here this morning. We're a few in number, but we're uh, uh, we're uh, hopefully the effective ones. Uh, glad you could join us. Uh, I don't have a super formal agenda this morning. Uh, I'll just kind of run through a few few uh, items. Uh, but first off, uh, like to uh, do a little round table and have everybody introduce yourself. Uh, I'll lead off, uh, and uh, I guess I'll uh, I'll call out the introductions uh, based on the order I can see you on my screen. But I'm Jody Gale from uh, Utah State University Extension. I'm based in central Utah. My position is a uh, 60% uh, county appointment and a 40% area assignment. Uh, I'm a traditional ag and natural resource agent. I uh, do agronomy, uh, kind of a, a one agent uh, uh, ag county. Uh, and then in my area assignment, I do a lot of work with ag related economic development and natural resources. Do a lot of work with elected officials and congressional. Uh, staff members on education. Uh, I uh, have been asked to uh, uh, serve as the chairman uh, for this next uh, cycle, and so uh, pleased to help uh, represent each of you. Uh, Madeline, I can see you next. Would you like to okay. introduce yourself and your position? Yeah. Hi, I'm, I'm Madeline DiNardo. I'm a county agent in Union County, New Jersey with Rutgers, so I'm more in the northern part um, of the state. And um, work on some natural resources stuff. We we uh, do a lot of work with our parks department on like emerald dash borer um, work, and uh, I coordinate the master gardener program here in our county. Okay, very nice. Thank you. And uh, here, uh, uh, serve as a vice chairman. Yep. Okay. And, uh, uh, Rachel, I can see you uh, next and order on my screen. Welcome. Yeah, thank you. Um, so I am Rachel Curry with the University of Illinois Extension. I'm located in West Central Illinois, not that so close to the Mississippi River. That's about for most people. That's as yeah. good as gonna get. Um, so I'm actually a statewide educator, and I focus on the Illinois Nutrient Loss Reduction Strategy, primarily looking at agricultural conservation, but we also do a lot with water quality, um, both on a local and national scale, and um, do some a little bit dabble, I suppose, with like green infrastructure. Um, we have other people on our team that that's what they do, but we also help support that work. Very nice. Thank you for joining us. How wide is the Mississippi River where you are? Well, I am about 40 miles from the Mississippi, but <laughs> um, there's a fair amount of flooding going on right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, very nice. That's a nice flow behind you. <clears throat> Uh, Kaylin or Kayleen, uh, I see you next. Would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, uh, it is Kaylin. You pronounced it right the first time, which is a rare occurrence. <laughs> um, my name is Kaylin Taylor. I work with the University of Florida IFAS Extension. I am a county director and serve um, our community through natural resources type programming. I work with a lot of our, our landowners we actually have a Saul Palmetto Berry workshop this weekend, if you guys are um, familiar with that industry. And we have a large amount of acres in conservation with our county. So I work a lot with land management to utilize those conservation properties um, to help educate uh, people within Volusia County and then also outside of our county because we have the Florida Master Naturalist Program that I lead. And we teach um, all three of our core classes and some of the specialty and restoration classes throughout the year. Um, so we, uh, we we try to get out as, as much as possible. Um, and I work with a lot of uh, hunters and um, their management aspects and prescribed burning within our county. And I was actually in Utah not too long ago. What did you think? 
It's a beautiful, beautiful state. Yeah, we went to, um, oh God, where did we go? We went to Bryce Canyon. We went to um, Zion. Um, yeah, we, we went to a bunch of different places. Very nice. Nice to have you in the state. <clears throat> I uh, had never been to Florida until we did the natural resource tour there when you hosted the AMPIC meeting a few years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, so very impressed. Uh, uh, so we have a very diverse state. Very diverse. Learned a lot about sugar cane and rice that we don't have in Utah. Yeah, and see, we don't even have that here in the central part of the state. Wow. <laughs> uh, Steve. <clears throat> Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Steve Yerjo. I'm the Environmental Resource Management Agent for Ocean and Atlantic Counties in Rutgers in New Jersey. It's in the southeastern coast. If you've ever heard of the Jersey Shore TV show, I'm just south of that. So I don't lay claim to that, but I do get to go to the, the, the coast and call it work. Um, I deal mostly with coastal uh, water resource protection on water quality issues and watershed management. Um, I do a lot of work with municipalities on green infrastructure, but mostly work with homeowners on um, environmentally sustainable landscaping practices and water conservation at home. So I, like Madeline, work with our Master Gardener program to do that. And we do have a Jersey Friendly Yards program that we modeled after the Florida Friendly Landscaping Program. So thank you for that and allowing us to do that. Um, but that's primarily where I work in. Thank you, Steve, and uh, thank you for joining us. Um, uh, again, welcome. Uh, it's nice to have you here with us. I, uh, uh, as far as the agenda goes, a um, uh, few main highlights. We'll talk a little bit about the upcoming AMPIC meeting in Dallas. Uh, we've got a plan of work we need to create uh, for this next uh, season. And then we've been asked by our um, uh, chairman and leadership to uh, look at any recommendations from our committee that would go to the national board on items that may be uh, of, uh, of, of interest or changes. Some of the words that were used to describe it is, are there any issues that uh, our committee would like to have the national board address? Uh, so we'll address that last on the agenda. So just kind of be thinking about that. I've got a couple of uh, things that have come, one thing I guess that have come up that's uh, kind of on my mind. So anyway, first off, let's uh, talk a little bit about our upcoming meeting in Dallas um, for the uh, Madeline and, and the other vice chairs. Uh, mm -hmm. And I might mention that uh, uh, Katie uh, Pekarik is the vice chair in North Central Region. She's from Nebraska. She's not with us today. Madeline, of course, uh, from uh, the North Region. Uh, uh, vice chair based in New Jersey. Uh, Shannon Williams is the vice chair for the Western region and she's in Idaho. And there's an open position, uh, the Southern region vice chair, uh, apparently uh, the gentleman that was there retired and that position has not yet been filled, but I suspect that will be filled this fall once uh, this season's AMPIC is, is complete. So uh, those of us, uh, myself and the vice chairs, act as the review committee for the oral presentation abstracts that were submitted. We had eight that were submitted. Uh, seven uh, were particularly well written and uh, were accepted for presentation. Our uh, uh, oral presentation time slot that our committee sponsors and provides occurs uh, July 16th starts at 8 30 in the morning goes until 11 30 there'll be the lunch break and then there'll be a few presentations in the afternoon from 1 30 until 3 30. Uh, we had some difficulty uh, getting together as a committee and i assigned myself to be the moderator for all of those sessions however i don't think there would be a problem if if uh, some of you were able to attend and would be interested into helping uh, moderate some of those presentations, I would welcome that. Mm -hmm. So uh, if, uh, if you would like to uh, uh, let me know and uh, uh, we could uh, uh, work that into the, the schedule. It gets kind of boring listening to the same moderator all the time. Mm -hmm. 
I'll, I'll be there, Jody. I can help out with some of the sessions. Okay, Madeline, thank you very much. And I'll uh, sure. get with you and uh, figure out a couple of slots. Anyone else would like to serve as a moderator? I'll have to review um, the schedule because I know we have like three different presentations that are occurring on um, that same day. So how far in advance do you need? Well, the the names and everything, I think, has already been published in the Correct. meeting. So uh, even right up until the day of the uh, the committee meeting, uh, I don't think you know, if, if you'd like to step in uh, okay. do it informally, just let me know. So okay. no, no rush. Making myself here a couple of notes so I don't forget. Uh, the room assignments that we'll be in, I've not looked at a map of the convention center, but our room assignment is Coronado B. And uh, that's where we'll host uh, the instructions that we have previously given uh, to those who will be presenting as they will have 25 total minutes of time. That includes presentation time, as well as time for question and answers. And then I blocked out five minutes to switch between uh, presenters uh, just to address the technology. Many times it goes smoothly and there's no hitches and, uh, you know, it's just a matter of just taking a couple of minutes, but I did uh, block out five minutes to do that. We will stay on time uh, in order to be able to stay in sync with presentations occurring in other rooms. Uh, the five minutes will also give participants in our room time to rotate uh, to other sessions if they would uh, would like to. And so uh, that's uh, roughly uh, what we'll be doing there. Uh, any questions about uh, our uh, presentation slots uh, for at the AMPIC in Dallas? Okay. Um, for the vice chairs, Madeline, this will uh, involve you. Uh, there's the vice chair breakfast. Uh, that'll be on Wednesday the 17th and uh, starts at 630 in the morning, unless that time has changed. Scott, uh, Scott uh, Hawbaker is uh, is in the background with us, but I believe that's at 630, kind of early, but it's a great time to get together. And uh, normally uh, uh, they have uh, uh, the meeting that we're participating in right now is held on, on uh, Sunday. Uh, but there's been some changing this year, and it was, the board had decided to try and uh, make more time available during the conference for other things. And so that's uh, hence the the Zoom uh, pre-committee uh, meetings this year. Uh, but uh, they will still hold that vice uh, chair breakfast. Uh, they're also encouraging us to attend uh, the photo session. Uh, about five o'clock just prior to the banquet in order to have uh, photographs taken of your respective positions. Okay, let's switch uh, to plan of work unless there's uh, any questions about what we've discussed so far. Uh, plan of work, I think in our roles in extension, we all understand what plan of works are. Uh, it will be for the 2024 to 2025 cycle essentially uh, between now or at least the end of the, this upcoming AMPIC and the meeting next year, which will be in Montana. Uh, the intent is to talk about what we would like to do as a committee and collectively decide uh, on uh, what we would like to offer. I think as everyone's aware, there's a number of committees in the association. I haven't counted the exact number and it's neither here nor there, but there's livestock, uh, economics, uh, horticulture, and a number of others. Uh, our committee, the Natural Resource uh, Aquaculture and Sea Grant Committee, uh, I've been uh, involved uh, uh, as a vice chair and then as a past chairman for a few years. As I uh, mentioned uh, to uh, Kaylin, we, uh, the, the, with help from uh, a few of the agents uh, in Florida, which is an extraordinary uh, pre-tour was provided there. We also had help in Iowa uh, last year. Uh, just uh, we had hoped to go kayaking on the Raccoon River and see a lot of natural resource, water quality related things. But with the drought last year, 
uh, the water was too low, and so we ended up on a wagon ride instead of in a in a mm -hmm. kayak. But we were able to go to a, a mm -hmm. conservation uh, center there, and uh, it ended up being a very nice, uh, very very nice tour. I thought uh, the the tour in Florida was long and expensive, but very very well done. The tour in Iowa was short, less expensive. Uh, there was not nearly as uh, much time allocated there. And I think we kind of get to choose on maybe how we would like to move forward. And I would welcome your Thank suggestions. So when I, in Iowa, or I'm sorry, in uh, Florida, if I'm remembering, I flew in on a Wednesday, uh, was picked up at the airport uh, by uh, Sheila Dunnigan and, and others from the Florida Association. Uh, we were uh, basically uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, uh, out looking around uh, many different natural resource areas mm -hmm. in Florida. It was just a, just a wonderful tour. It was about $850 for the registration for it, which included the hotel uh, accommodations. Uh, the university provided the vans uh, uh, that also covered food and, and other arrangements while we were on the tour. Uh, it was very well done. We only had nine participate. Uh, uh, it's a little bit light in numbers, and I think it was partly because of how long it was when you take the, uh, those days on the pre-tour and add that to the days of the AMPIC. I think many did not want to or were unable to be gone from home and from uh, from work for that, that extended period, which was a little bit uh, the light numbers. So... Uh, a year and a half ago, our committee decided to uh, provide another pre-tour, but it basically went from about uh, one o'clock on a fr on a Saturday afternoon until uh, later that evening. Was located about an hour and a half away from the the headquarters hotel. Uh, again, a university van. I'm forgetting the exact number. So we had like what was it? Maybe thirty. Uh, I'll have to go back and check my notes, but had a, a good group. Uh, we're able to uh, uh, see the uh, resources. Uh, we had a lot of help from a couple of individuals from uh, Iowa State that just did a great job in providing it. So just to kind of for your reference, that's what we have done in the past. Now, we're not doing a pre-tour, obviously, this year. Uh, in part, uh, we weren't able to pull our committee together and weren't able to uh, make the arrangements uh, this year, uh, kind of due to the change in leadership. Uh, but uh, where we're this far out from the meeting in Montana, uh, I'd welcome your uh, your observations. Would you be interested in uh, looking towards Montana next year to provide a pre-tour? Uh, and if so, uh, do you want to do a long one, a short one, or a medium length one? Uh, what uh, what would be your interest? Uh, Montana and those of us that live here in the West, there are lots and lots of natural resource uh, related things to see and do. So what's your feeling? What city is it being hosted in, in Montana? I can't remember. A uh, Billings. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah. No, it's about two hours from Yellowstone. So I was wondering if maybe that would be a good pre-conference place to visit. If you have never been to Yellowstone before, it's an awesome place to visit. Uh, takes a good full day to see about half the park. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, if you really want to do uh, to see most of the park, it takes about two days. There's kind of two loops uh, uh, during the different parts of the park, but to see the geysers and the waterfalls and uh, in the, the hot springs and to do it in a somewhat relaxing manner it takes a little while to get through I'm sorry so uh, uh, what, you know, what 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 do you think would you like to kind of uh, look at a two-day tour or a one-day tour yeah. I, I think people would be interested maybe a a two-day, I don't think a two-day would extend the conference too much for people. So are you thinking we would do the tour like on a, 
all day Friday, all day Saturday type approach. Uh, and mm -hmm. then, you know, we, we could fly in like on a, uh, on a Thursday, fly to the conference on a Thursday okay. and start uh, the tour on a, for, and then do a Friday, Saturday tour, get back to the host hotel mm -hmm. was Saturday evening, something like that. Yeah. Could we send um, different locations and ideas? So mm -hmm. if we found somewhere else besides Yellowstone, yes, that would be, yeah. to get the most out of Yellowstone, a two-day tour would be yeah. beneficial. But say we found a couple of smaller locations that were closer, mm -hmm. um, we could cut it down to a one-day because you are right like the two day when we had it in florida um it is a lot to ask people to come that much earlier mm. Mm. i wonder if there's some people in montana we could talk to um for ideas um i know that uh attended a conference, the National Association of Community Development Extension Professionals. We had a conference in uh, in uh, Billings uh, a few years ago and visited a, a fisherman's uh, equipment manufacturing plant, which was just really interesting. Showed how they made hip waders and, and uh, all types of things. So there's kind of business things that, uh, that uh, that are natural resource related. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we could, uh, you know, we, we don't have to make all the decisions today. Today's kind of mostly a, what my intent would be kind of a brainstorming session. I, uh, in the other tours, uh, you know, we could visit with uh, some of the members of the Montana Association and see mm -hmm. what they're providing for other natural resource related tours that are yeah. part of the regular ag tour or regular tour day tours and then see if there's something that uh, they have ideas that they mm -hmm. can maybe propose to us on uh you know maybe doing something more with yellowstone or other uh, other natural resource related things and get some ideas from them we we don't have to have a firm plan uh in place until uh kind of approaching the end of the year uh, so that by the time we get into uh, March, we've got a pretty good idea of what the tour would be. So we've got a tour description can be published in the County Agent Magazine. So we've got uh, essentially six months to, uh, mm -hmm. to come up with ideas and kind of figure out a plan and decide what we're doing and see if we can come up with enough money. Uh, our committee does have $1,000 uh, uh, per year. I don't know, Scott, if the unused thousand dollars from uh, this current cycle uh, could transition over and help us with our tour next year, or if that money is just forfeit where we didn't uh, provide a tour this year. And I'll I'll defer that question to you. It unfortunately for the committees, it's a use it or lose it. So, um, yeah. okay. Like you would of, only you would only have the thousand plus any other money you were able to. That I mean, that's the one disadvantage to the pre tours is they can get kind of expensive, and if finding outside funding to assist, if if that doesn't happen, then it kind of has to be covered by member participants. Um, yeah. You know, small smaller tour tours uh, can obviously go van rental, which is a lot cheaper than than uh, renting a fifty five passenger bus. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Not as you know, you you get the conveniences of a bus, but it comes with a price tag. So, um, you know, a lot of times the cost can be can be kept manageable. If the transportation costs can be limited. Um, this year, for example, you know, Animal Science knew how expensive the buses were going to be in Dallas. And um, even though they have over 20 different bus companies in Dallas, it was still everybody was asking top dollar. 
-hmm. So Mark Nelson, the national chair, chose to go the van route, and then he cut it off uh, once he kind of maxed out the two vans and then got all these additional people wanting to go. So he's mm -hmm. now up to 47 people and several mm -hmm. people driving separately. And uh, now he kind of wishes he'd re done the bus thing, but... Um, you know, during the planning stages, it's really difficult to know. Do we plan on 15 people to go or 50 people to go? And, if, you know, planning for the big numbers means you kind of got to go get outside funding or plan on a registration fee being significantly higher. Um, but no, to end, long story, you only get the thousand. Um, but you know, in all reality, van rental for a couple of days uh, could probably still be manageable with a fairly uh, reasonable registration fee. Mm -hmm. Scott, thank you for that uh, yep. uh, feedback. Uh, appreciate it. I kind of assumed that was uh, that was the answer. Um, so um, again, we we don't have to plan the pre tour entirely today. I just kind of the the main decision is uh, deciding are we going to do one or not, and then uh, in the next six months uh, we can can kind of start to uh, uh, pull the ideas together about Yellowstone. I appreciate that suggestion and. Uh, 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 Kaylin from uh, you know the possibility of looking at other things and we can uh, receive some suggestions from uh, some of the Montana agents on other things we might see mm -hmm. so I guess maybe uh, is there anyone opposed or would rather not do a pre-tour or is uh, are we kind of all leaning towards uh, sponsoring a pre-tour uh, we could back out and, and not do one at all, and the, the board would need to know by, you know, as we start to approach the end of the year, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Scott, if I know what, the, is it like the December board meeting when, when some of those decisions are made? Um, that's a very good question. Um, ideally, yes, but I know... Definitely, probably by February 15th at the latest, uh, okay. because it's the April registration edition of the magazine that we use to promote it and would need all that information as far as descriptions of what you're doing, where you're going, how much the cost is, would all need to go into that magazine that goes to the printer by no later than March 10th. So, and registration for this meeting, even though it is a little bit earlier of a meeting, I mean, it's the end of June, so it's a couple of weeks earlier, it'll still be a April 1 to May 15th registration period. Um, okay. But yeah, I mean, if you, if you had... If you had firm details by that first week of December, it would help the board. But budgeting wise, since it's a kind of a self-funded function, um, it's not mandatory that the board knows that information for certain by the December board meeting because the budget that's prepared there is strictly for expenses we know for the the meeting portion of the meeting mm -hmm. so little flexibility okay very very good so let's uh let's unless there's other comments questions concerns about a pre-tour i was thinking scott could could you give us the um contact person for like the who's chairing the tours for montana because that might be a good person so we're not like doing something they already have planned or um off the top of my head i don't know who that individual yeah is. yeah i thought but, i thought you know if you could let us know sure uh -huh. yeah i mean yeah. i know she shelly mills and patrick mangan yeah are the co-chairs of the meeting um 
but I know Shelley has has sent me some previous documents that list who her yeah, chairs are. are. Uh, probably yeah. be getting an update from her because when we're in Dallas uh, that she'll give to the board because it's not uncommon for chair roles to uh, switch around change. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the, you know I, def I definitely can get get that information to the committee and uh, because I agree it would be good to reach out to them to find out mm -hmm. what plans there are because you don't necessarily yeah. want to duplicate it mm -hmm. okay thanks Yep. Yeah, thank, thank you. I, I, I will assume Montana will have a booth in the trade show and what I've done previous years. I've gone by and met the agents in the booth and kind mm -hmm. of, uh, you know, establish some communication there. And then, uh, you know, Scott, if you get uh, a name or anything, uh, you know, please uh, let us know that we'll also uh, seek out those in the booth and uh, start to establish some communication with them. Okay, um, this is kind of uh, maybe a little bit of an assumption, but uh, traditionally our committee, as well as the other committees provide uh, breakout sessions. Uh, I'm assuming that there's support to continue to do that next year, uh, where we'd receive abstracts, review those abstracts, uh, select those that are well written for oral presentation. Uh, and the time that I've been involved, we kind of range between uh, you know, we're a little lighter this year uh, at eight that have been submitted. Some years we've had as many as about 13 submitted. Uh, but we usually have uh, essentially most of a, of a full day uh, uh, available to us to be able to provide oral presentations. Is there support to continue to do that? Okay. Uh, we'll uh, do that traditionally the way that's occurred is that uh, when those uh, abstracts are submitted through the NACAA uh, portal, uh, uh, when those calls are made, uh, it occurs the same time for all of the committees. Uh, Steve has been a presenter uh, uh, a couple of times, if I remember correctly, Steve on the Natural Resource Committee. And uh, those, uh, the Vice chairs and myself uh, as the chair have typically been the review committee. It doesn't have to be just us. Anyone that's uh, that's uh, uh, on the call today, you know, if you would like to serve as a reviewer uh, of those abstracts, uh, we would welcome that help. Uh, then we make a determination on those that are accepted. Those that are accepted with revisions, the way the portal is set up, it's pretty easy to make any needed revisions. And, uh, and then uh, then those are accepted for presentation as well as publication. So uh, we'll uh, assume that we will do that again next year. One additional option is a super seminar. Uh, when uh, the national meeting was held in Utah in 2017, I was not on the national NACAA Natural Resource Committee at the time, but I helped. Uh, provide and made arrangements for speakers for a super seminar. And uh, this is an additional uh, option that uh, uh, we could choose to do if you would like, along with maybe some suggestions and help from the Montana Association uh, to be able to prov provide a super seminar. Uh, Scott is the timeline for uh, uh, offering uh, to provide a super seminar similar to what the tours are, or is that a little earlier? Um, I would say plan on that request by the descent, just plan on December one if you want to do it. Because there, uh, since that function takes place during the AMPIC, you might, whoever's elected vice president. Uh, which we only have one candidate is my understanding, but anything can happen in Dallas. Um, they'll be sending information out requesting it, but I ideally, I ideally plan on December one to make the, make the request. Uh, but they may come back later this fall and tell you, you've got until maybe January 15th. Um, 
once again, though, the information for it, if selected and notified by, by the vice president or council chair that I know, keep in mind the Montana meeting is four days, is only a four day meeting instead of a five day. So it's a little bit different. Um, so the schedules, you know, th there may be, I want to say, in some board discussion that I recall, they were going to limit the super seminars to only three will be offered. So if you put in a good pitch, make make sure if you put in a request for one that it's a good one because you will be potentially competing against other committees for one of those three three spots. Uh in Iowa, we made the decision as a committee that because we were doing the pre-tour, we would not offer or attempt <clears throat> to do a seminar, a super seminar at the same time. That was just a decision that uh, that uh, we as a committee made at that time. So it's kind of up to us, uh, one or the other or both. Uh, any sentiments? Uh, how, how do you have kind of feeling about it? Should we concentrate on the tour, pre-tour and not with the competition for uh, super seminars where that's limited uh, for goal, uh, putting a proposal there. What what are you thinking? I think that would lean toward focusing on a tour. Okay. Other sentiments? I agree with towards the tour. Okay. Any feelings one way or the other from you, Rachel? Yes, I would lean a little bit more towards the tour. Okay. All right. Well, then uh, let's uh, kind of uh, put that in our plan of work that we will uh, focus our efforts on the pre-tour and uh, not pursue a super seminar. <clears throat> okay. Checking my notes here. We're getting up to be about 45 minutes into the, our meeting today. Um, I don't know that I have any other specific uh, questions about our plan of work uh, that we have not addressed that kind of kind of lays out uh, our activities and kind of what we're going to do for the year. Unless I'm missing something, Scott, if you have any advice on uh, on other things that I might be forgetting on plan of work or any committee members if there are other things that uh, that uh, that you think that our committee uh, might uh, do in association to the uh, in, in relation to the National Association to promote natural resources any ideas mm -hmm. that uh, ought to be identified in our plan of work uh, no I mean I know just based on previous emails and discussions that we've had that you know that utilization of the 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 mem the membership data that is available uh within our each member's profile to uh identify that they that they identify with natural resources you know from a marketing aspect if there are things the committee wants to do to promote various elements um of committee activities with those agents who have specified that they're natural resource related agents, um, that that's there. Um, I kind of mentioned just for the rest of you, Jody had had asked me what kind of, we kind of got to talking just on in general, like about listservs that may be available uh, to reach out to members of the association. And unfortunately our new website hosting company doesn't um basically told me they don't want to get involved in um developing and and disseminating and creating listservs and running the e-blasts through their their platform um so i just kind of pointed out to jody that you know we do have a way to grab that information from the member profiles if they've gone in and 
selected natural resources as one of their specialty areas, um, mm -hmm. but but it kind of would require us to um, pull that data from the website, gather the email addresses, and then disseminate information through a third-party software similar to what I do with MailChimp uh, for the e-blast that I send out to our members. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's possible I could, I could, you know, obviously create a, a separate e-blast through that MailChimp account. Um, but at the same hand, I, I don't, I got to be careful on how many e-blasts we send uh, just so that we don't have then people unsubscribing. <laughs> Uh, and, and and then they get nothing from us. So, um, but, but anyway, I mean, you know, there's every committee struggles with the marketing and promotion to our members about, you know, getting word out about pre-tours or super seminars or maybe other activities that are held throughout the year. Um, but, you know, obviously we're, on, on the national side, if there's ways that the board can assist in in that, um, I don't think they want to do it for you. But you know, if we can if we can identify the tools that you need to to better promote or market, I know they would be open to assisting. However, they could. So, uh, thank you, thank you, Scott, and yep. kind of addressing that. I appreciate that. And and uh, I think there's some legwork that I can do on my end that, uh, uh, that uh, our president uh, mentioned uh, on how we might be able to pull that information out of the membership uh, Excel sheet to be able to help do that. So I'll, uh, I'll take that uh, upon myself to uh, try and, uh, and finesse that and work with that a little bit so we can promote the natural resource issues. Uh, one thing I failed to mention early on when I talked about the agenda were 365 seminars. Yeah. I'm not sure how many of you are aware, but NACA provides a couple of slots every month uh, for members to provide essentially non-peer-reviewed uh, type presentations. They're an hour-long webinar uh, on all kinds of subjects, uh, information that has to do with natural resources, livestock. Uh, uh, information about uh, uh, association business, uh, uh, you know, the, 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 it's wide open essentially on whatever topics uh, would, uh, would, uh, can be addressed through those, those seminars. This is a relatively new function of the association. I've been a member of NACAA for longer than I care to admit. Uh, but uh, this has been available the last couple of years, and so it's a new thing. And uh, I provided one last year. Uh, I've got one scheduled. Uh, again, uh, sponsor of this is coming from our committee. And uh, so I'll be doing one on September 11th this year on a program that we do here in Utah on a congressional briefing uh, tour that we do. And uh, we've got another member who uh, has expressed interest in providing a, a 365 webinar on pollinators that we're in the process of uh, kind of getting scheduled. If any of you would like to do that uh, or have colleagues that you could gently twist their arm that have got some uh, outstanding natural resource related programs, uh, the, it would be very helpful to be able to, to, to begin to fill that calendar up. There's a lot of open slots right now, and and it's still a relatively new thing and hasn't caught on super well yet within the association. Uh, but uh, the presentations are recorded; they're there on YouTube, and membership can go back and and uh, look at those uh, webinars on important topics. Uh, do any of you have uh, a, a program that you would like to maybe provide a webinar on that would go to the national membership? some ideas we possibly have two that we could highlight i need to speak with a, a few of the other agents okay very good yeah. um, <clears throat> scott i probably didn't fully understand this previously that the chairs of the respective committees kind of help in 
doing some of the arrangements, but it's really just real simple. There's just a, a website a link that I can send out and you go to the website and there's an open uh, call there where you can, uh, can uh, volunteer and sign up for a slot. So uh, Kaylin, I'll uh, uh, get with you and <clears throat> uh, you get with your colleagues and uh, kind of figure out a date uh, and uh, we'll move forward. Kind of like to provide a couple of those uh, uh, super seminar or those uh, 365, uh, I'm copying your email here, uh, to uh, have those, uh, uh, to be able to sponsor those from our committee each year. So thank mm -hmm. you. Be thinking about uh, this and uh, there's uh, uh, quite a few slots there. All right, uh, kind of getting right down to the wire here. Last uh, item I have is uh, the board has requested any recommendations specifically from our committee for issues associated with the National Association. Uh, they can be simple, complex. Uh, they can have to do with annual media professional improvement uh, uh, conferences. They can have anything to do with how our respective committee functions. It's really quite, uh, quite broad. On, uh, on what they're seeking from us uh, on ideas on how to prove, improve the association and its function. I had one small thing come up uh, that I thought I would run past all of you. It's, uh, it's, it's not a very big uh, issue, but I often wondered why is our committee called the Natural Resource Aquaculture and Sea Grant Committee? That seems to be a pretty long title <clears throat> and uh, uh, you know anything to do with uh, with sea grant related things is still natural resources. Uh, things to do with aquaculture is still natural resources. Mm -hmm. So I had wondered if it would be appropriate, and I did have some earlier discussions with uh, with uh, Scott and and then with JJ about the possibility of doing this. It'd be a fairly simple thing. It wouldn't uh, take a, a, a policy change or uh, anything drastic if we were to just shorten the name and just call us the Natural Resource Committee. So that was one idea that I had, uh, maybe just a way to to simplify and natural resource title is very inclusive of everything related to be natural resources, water quality, wildlife, uh, you know, uh, 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 aquaculture, uh, forestry, et cetera, et cetera. All of those fit underneath the umbrella of natural resources. So. I would offer that as a proposal for your consideration. Uh, if uh, we as a board uh, could, uh, if there would be support to uh, maybe make that recommendation to the national board, what do you think? Okay, I'm. I'm yeah, I think, I think makes sense maybe, to me. Yeah, and then maybe just in the description of the committee, include you know forestry, fisheries, aquaculture. In, in the description of what the committee covers, wildlife management. Okay. All right. I will. Uh, uh, this, this looks like there's uh, uh, support for that. So I will uh, um, uh, make that uh, recommendation to the board uh, with your approval. And uh, uh, for that name change, and then uh, Madeline, maybe I'll get with you and uh, let's kind of work on maybe a little write up on the description. And I don't know if there's something, uh, an additional write up, Scott, that we need to be uh, mindful of uh, that describes the function of our committee, but we can, can uh, check into that and, and uh, make sure we're uh, on, on seat there. Anything else that that uh, is on your mind as, uh, uh, very broadly that has to do with uh, NACAA, something that just gripes you uh, or, you know, the board, I think, is kind of asking for issues, but uh, are there some very positive things that you'd like to provide feedback to the board on things that are working very well that we uh, that we should make sure the board uh, is aware that uh, that's going well and and uh, not to mess with? Well, Well, I'll, I'll chime in. I've been quiet this whole time. I might as well say something. Um, <laughs> the, I, I think the one good thing about this committee is that it 
actually, you know, for someone who doesn't work or hardly works on the agricultural side of everything and more on the natural resources side, it's great that this committee even exists to represent that that kind of group within the the the, the larger um, NACAA community. Um, when I went to the first AMPIC ages ago, I won't give it the year. Um, it, it was nice to see that there was kind of this subset or this little kind of, you know, community of natural resources folks who are working in wildlife, water conservation, you know, fire, forestry, aquaculture, some of the things that that I touch upon that it was like, oh, okay, it's not, I'm not going to sit there and hear about soybeans for four days straight or something like that. So it's good that this this group, this committee even exists in the first place within the, the organization. Um, so it's good to see that. So I'm glad that you guys are still willing to to represent, you know, natural resources and all the, the, the complexity and the variety that's in that. So even just having this in existence, it, I think is a really good thing uh, for the, the, the organization. Thank you, Steve. Uh, other other comments, other ideas. I will say from my vantage point as one of the old guys in the association, um, the, one of the parts that I enjoy the very, very most about the national meeting. Yes, we have our business meeting, we have elections, we have all of the business we need to do, the committee functions that the association does, they're all uh, critical for the function of the association. But I really, really enjoy the tours. And I really enjoy the opportunity for networking with other uh, extension agents, other faculty across the country. Mm -hmm. The tours to be able to get out into states like as mentioned earlier. Uh, I We don't grow sugar cane in Utah. We don't grow rice in Utah. And I had never seen it in production. And it was really fun to be able to go to Florida, stand there in that warehouse at the end of the season. It was literally as big as a football field and see all of that uh, uh, raw sugar uh, that was headed to uh, going uh, into our food supply. It was it was extraordinary to be able to see that. I'd never been to the Everglades before, and we had a chance to go on an airboat ride and and uh, and learn the difference on between crocodiles and alligators, and it was uh, it was really fun. And I've I've really enjoyed that over the years uh, to the various meetings. So um, that's uh, that's one of the things that I enjoyed the, 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 a great deal. Um, I if, like it too. It's it's really nice for um, people's careers too to present at a national meeting and have a peer reviewed abstracts and stuff. That's I think that's really had a big impact on a lot of people's careers. And you know that has not always been a real strong function of the association, at least early on when I first became a member. Uh, and that has been something that's evolved more <clears throat> more recently to be able to help provide uh, opportunities for peer-reviewed presentations and publications and proceedings. And uh, that's a, a critical role that the association provides. So I, I share your sentiments, but just kind of know that it, historically that was really not a a real strong function of the association, but it has become that the last uh, oh probably decade or or maybe even a little longer that it's uh, that's really uh, really uh, an important function. Well, we're coming up on an hour. Uh, thank you everyone for joining today. Uh, if you have additional uh, questions or comments. Uh, you'd like to get to me, let me maybe just verbally share with you my email. Here in Utah, uh, our email system is real simple. It's first and last name separated by a period. And uh, so my email is jody dot gale at usu dot edu. And so you can reach almost anyone in Utah if you know their first and last name separated by a period, and that's at usu.edu. So the whole thing again, jody dot gale at usu.edu. And uh, if you, or you can give me a phone call, 435 979 
4790 is my cell phone, uh, 435-979-4790. And if you have other uh, things that you would like the committee to address, uh, please let me know. Uh, we'll uh, move forward with the plan of work. I will submit uh, uh, this information to the board. I think uh, that goes in today and uh, we'll uh, proceed uh, in, in that manner. Look forward to seeing all of you in Dallas uh, this coming week. Thank you. Thanks for joining us, Scott. All, as always, thank you very much for all you do for the association, what you do to make our committee function. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thanks, everyone.